You're listening to the Drinks in a Movie podcast, hosted by Rudy Ruiz. Spoiler alert. Drinks in a Movie podcast. All right, everybody. So here's what we're doing today. It's finally time. We're going to talk about one of my all-time favorite movies, quite possibly one of the best movies ever made. I, I think I can safely say this is John Carpenter's masterpiece. This is The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. The year of my birth. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, your first time seeing this, right? First time. All right. This will be an exciting talk. I will also tell you that I didn't, all, I knew of some of the beats that I knew the basic setup for the yeah. film, but I didn't know a lot about it, to be honest with you, going to do it right. for such a classic. And for this one, we're going to do a couple pours here. So I felt I would be remiss if we didn't do J and B. <laughs> so we've got rare J and B. <laughs> A blend of the finest old Scotch whiskeys, Justerini and Brooks. That's what the JB stands for if you wanted to know. Blended Scotch whiskey, 80 proof. Distilled, blended, and bottled in Scotland. So, you know, I'm not the biggest Scotch fan, and this is on the cheaper end for sure. This is like 20 bucks, but we had to do it because this is what McCready drinks in the movie. And so. the label looks pretty damn close to the way it looks in the movie, too, if not identical. Yeah. So just to let you know, in case you're wondering. So, um, hold on, let me... I'm going to pour the nice little pot. I'm going to pour this other one. I'll talk about this after, but we will drink this afterward. But yeah, here we go. So, all right. So let's go into this, this J and B here. Let's see, <laughs> see what we got. Some scotch. Um, I, I, I shouldn't have these preconceived about no, it, me, me too. I was I'm looking at the to bottle. Go and I, yeah, I'm trying. Cause I feel like I'm already preparing myself <laughs> to be disgusted <laughs> and I need to not do that. So that's my fault. <laughs> okay. Let's put it aside. We'll, uh, but this color, color is not helping guys. There is by sure. <laughs> it is for sure. We've never drank anything. With this this color. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So funny enough, it kind of smells like a corn whiskey to me, like a little bit of uh, maybe one of the more interesting Sierra Norte whiskeys. I'm, I'm not as against scotch, and I, I shouldn't say as against scotch. I'm a little, my, my palate is a bit more open to scotch than I think yours might be. Yeah. Like I've had Glenlivet and it's totally fine. Yeah. Like, it doesn't bother me or anything like that. So, and I even had, what did I have? What's the, oh gosh, the well-known uh, Irish whiskey that I just recently. Jameson? Jam no, not Jameson. Um, Tullamore Duel, du 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 Tullamore Dew. Bushmills. Bushmills. Thank you. Yeah. Jesus. Sorry. My, we've already done one of these folks. So the brain is already on the fog. I just had some Bushmills recently and I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. So. yeah this reminds me of a, it's interesting. Like just reminds me of like a, a corn whiskey. Yeah. It's really, it, it is really light. You can definitely, yeah. it's not as nearly as strong as the, even just the wild turkey. Yeah. Definitely that, that malted barley for sure is, should be. Cause that's what it, you know, is uh, or barley, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Um, not as bad as I was expecting. it. You're gonna throw that out there right on the first taste. Yeah, yeah, I'll go in for another sip right now. So in comparison to the normal crop of whiskeys and rye and all those kind of things that we drink, it reminds me a lot of like a light beer. <laughs> yeah, man, it's that's just, a good way to put it. it. It just feels like, you know, it doesn't have the the spice and the flavor and the boldness and a lot of things we're used to drinking, especially even just, we, we you know, we warmed up today on a, some Wild Turkey uh, 101. And like even something as simple as that has a lot of flavor to it, you know? And this just, it it feels like it's the light version of something that might be like that. Yeah, man, that, that's, I agree with that. <laughs> All right, here we go, sip number two. Which, and let me throw this out there. There's nothing wrong with light beer. Like for some people, that's their entry, in, or that's what they would prefer. Like they, they don't need something as 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 <laughs> as, uh, as with the same amount of heat or with the same amount of you know volume as some of the things we normally drink. Yeah, it's for sure a scotch. It is light and you know just malted barley. Maybe the teeny tiniest little bit of peat smoke. Teeny tiniest teeny, little bit. Yeah. Um, almost maybe a little bit lemony, like lemon vibe. Yeah, man, it's funny. You say the light beer thing, and when I drink <laughs> it, it's almost like drinking a flat beer, like a yeah, Miller Light yeah. that's like, been sitting that's there was, a little too long. I was thinking long. Coors Light, but yeah, the same yeah, exact dude, thing. Dude. That is, yeah, shit, okay. You know, I wish we had more to say about it. It's, yeah, that's a, it's a light scotch. If you want to try a scotch and you can find a little bottle of this and it's like 15, 20 bucks or whatever, or sure, try it as maybe like an intro. And and there yeah. are some things where I've maybe tasted and I I've wanted if I'm doing a tasting I might consider spinning it out I wouldn't actually consider spinning this out it's not it's not anything like you can't drink it down it's it's actually totally fine it's just it's the light beer version yeah it's, <laughs> yeah light beer I man yeah I just want to finish it and get it out of here <laughs> you're just pushing through aren't you okay all right here's the real shit now we right get so we had to do that because it's in the movie I just yeah. you know never had it before so there we go J and B scotch but in reality and I'm sorry I had to do both of these but 
I'm going to say like, we got a little sponsor from Nelson bros. Hell here, yeah. As you man. know, oh, I'm so bros. excited about this. They've been very kind to me. I really like their product. I forgot to bring the classic bourbon as like a warm up to this, but that's okay. I also liked um, watching your unboxings on the, uh, that yeah. Was super yeah. So I've got the last one to cover and I just broke the seal. Like we just poured it um, at the beginning of this episode, but we're going to do the Nelson bros cognac cask kind of distillery only. We're coming in at 96.7 proof, a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in cognac cask. So Nelson bros from Nashville, Tennessee. If you've been following the, the, the podcast, the Instagram, TikTok, you know, I'm a big fan of their stuff. Yeah. I did a whole entire podcast episode with one of the brand ambassadors from Nelson bros, where we tasted through a lot of their stuff and they sent me a care package. Thank you again, guys so much. I appreciate it. And uh, this was one of the bottles they sent me and they sent it after the rest of the package. So that's why I just haven't covered it yet. And now we're finally here and it's a nice dark color compared to what we just had. <laughs> and let me read about this a little bit. So uh, Nelson Brothers cask finish, ser cask finish series marries historic standards of excellence with the restless spirit of 21st century innovation. Prior to bottling, we pour well-aged Nelson Brothers whiskey into casks previously used to produce cognac in France. Cool. The result is a singular fusion of fragrance and flavor. Um, I thought there'd be a little more info on there. I'll go on the website and check it out, but. I, I yeah, love, so there's one thing that I've definitely learned as we've done more of these tastings is how much the barrel can impact, mm -hmm. you know, what the flavor is. And I think that's so interesting how you can create some of these different flavor profiles with just something like cognac barrel. Yeah. Have you done any sort of tasting of other bourbons or whiskeys in, in cognac barrels? Or is this going to be your first one? The only cognac finishes I've had have been, um, I have a high, like Sagamore Spirit did a cognac finish okay. a while back. That one's really good. That's the one that Callie got me as oh, the cool. groomsman gift. Nice. So Sagmore Spirit finishing cognac. And um, I have a High West double rye that's cognac finished. So I've only had rye as that have been to that. I've never had a cognac finished um, bourbon. Yeah. So that's going to be a different vibe for sure. Because you're already dealing with like a sweeter spirit. That's right what I was thinking. Bat. Like I haven't had, I've only drank cognac maybe once or twice in my life. And I just remember being sweeter. So I'm curious if how that's going to, that's what my assumption would be to impact the way this is going to taste. But yeah, and it's always interesting with like doing bourbons this way because you know it's all you're doing like sweet on sweet. You yeah, know? Like, yeah, yeah. I think rise I really understand because right. it's already a different kind of vibe. But so I'm trying to find it in the uh, man, where is it in the website here to see if there's a little more to read about. God damn, I should have already had this probably product. like a tasting profile, but maybe they don't have one. Maybe this is this we get for the uh, distillery only. Yeah, I man, I swore I've looked at it before. Products, there we go. Let's see. Distillery exclusives. Black By the way, at some point we got to make a trip to Tennessee. Yeah, no, I, man, I want to go. <laughs> and they had redone and revamped their distillery. Oh man. Cause I remember we were talking about it in that podcast episode I had done before. And now like it's been open and everything. And I follow them on the Instagram and it looks beautiful. They always post like so many great so cool. pictures of it. And it just all looks like cool as hell. It looks super nice. I feel like we could spend a week there and we still wouldn't, have enough time for uh, to hit the stuff we'd want to. Yeah, probably. All right. Sorry. I think I'm almost there. All right. <laughs> Cognac gas. Here we go. So now available at the distillery and in select markets, oh, which cool, yeah. sadly is not out here. Yeah. I've never seen this out here. Yeah. I'll, I'll read a little bit off, yep. off here. We'll see what we got. I'll, I'll save the tasting notes for after, but the French oak casks selected for this release were originally used the AJ blend of, I don't know how to say this, U to V. O de V, I don't know, made from grapes grown in the legendary vineyards of Cognac in southwestern France. When our award-winning bourbon enters these casts, the results come close to alchemy. The Cognac's rich colors and earthy sweet notes married to the high-rise savor of Nelson Brothers bourbon yield ingenious and irresistible expression. Uh, no information on how long they finish it, but yeah, let's dig in. I'm excited for this one. Thank you guys again for sending it my way and for yeah. sponsoring Drinks in a Movie podcast. Wow, I'm having trouble like picking anything out of the out of the aroma. The first time I stuck my nose in it, it, I got a bit of it almost was like brown sugary something a little bit dark, but I'm having a little trouble getting it again. Yeah. So compared to some of the other things it's it's as strong, but that's not necessarily a bad thing just noticing it. I can see that like brown sugar, like a little bit of that like kind of fruity characteristic. Fruity, yeah. I just got some more of it. All right, well, I'm going to go in. Here we go. Do Cheers. Man, wow, that's really nice. Really nice. On my first taste, I still got, there was a fair amount, I felt like, of what I would consider a little more fruit. Fruit. Uh, let me give a second one here. I'm struggling to pick out any details, and I'm going to make a whole other video about it, and I'll probably drink the 
their like classic bourbon before this so i can like really get the difference and yeah. finish like their regular bourbon through it but yeah i definitely I, smell that almost like, like a dark grape I, yeah. I know it sounds totally strange but and maybe i'm just reacting to knowing that it's finished in cognac barrels but i i do actually get some some dark fruit which is the only way i could describe it like a dark grape or a dark cherry maybe mm. Maybe a dark cherry is more what I'm thinking of, but it's, it's not overpowering. It's, it's, it's a bit subtle. It's, it's mellow. Yeah. Mellow. Subtle. It's, it's very mellow. It's really soft and easy and just nice. Yeah. It's like a soft comforting, but like still has a good, um, texture on the tongue. Let me, uh, so yeah, now, now I'm let me actually check out these, these notes here. So on the nose, pear, creme brulee and raspberry. Hmm. Okay. So my dark berry, I didn't get that yeah, on the nose, right. but I am in the right ballpark. Which is not normal. So this is, <laughs> I don't know if that makes you feel better or not, but I think, and I, you know, I, of course now I'm influenced by this, right. But sure, like, yeah. I, I think, yeah, you were saying the dark berry kind of yeah. thing. So raspberry, I can see that. I can see a little pear palate, nutmeg, shortbread, and honey, honey. Interesting. And on the finish, apple, toffee, clove. I was going to mention a little bit of clove, but mm. I feel like that's just quite often. Yeah. One of the ones I like it, man. This is tasty. Yeah. I'm going to. Pour myself a little bit more and have it just kind of open up through we'll the leave discussion. Mine open yeah. up. And there was something I was going to say. Now. Sorry. Let's just finish. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nelson Bros. Cognac cask. And I'll do this again and I'll make a little video about it too. Um, and yeah, I'm going to l- let this breathe while we kind of talk through. I, Every I'd time say, we've tasted one of these, by the way, they're different. Uh, they're different labels. Every one has been really t- They just have a good, good uh, flavor to them. Every yeah. Time. Yeah. Like n- nobody sleep on Nelson Bros. Oh, I feel like they're very much slept on and I'm here. Drinks and movie podcast is here to tell you to not do that. Like get the, get that reserve bourbon trust. And Rudy's brought this to different where, where we have people or, you know, outside of just us who are into it, you know, yeah, and yeah. they have really enjoyed it. You were saying that this is really easy to drink. Like I could see other people who maybe, yeah, this is super yeah, easy. It'd be a super easy one to pick up if it's your first time or something similar. Yeah. If this wasn't, if this was something I can get normally, yeah. <laughs> like I only have it because uh, again, right. thank you guys so much for sending it my way. I would use this when people tell me like oh, i'm not that into bourbon i'd be like try this one you know yeah that'd be fun to ask if we ever get some or if you ever are able to talk to somebody who runs a distillery or is a little bit more higher up uh who makes these decisions because i'm wondering if any of these like distilleries uh only ever make it into some of their brands that we see you know or some of the labels that we see nationwide because like when you have something like that that has such a good flavor and such a good taste to it i mean I assume you'd want to make more of it if you think it could sell and stuff. So yeah, I know. Just yeah, I, I guess that's when you get into like the distribution chains right, right. and all that. The economics, like, the yeah, whole all that thing, stuff. Yeah. That I don't even know about. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I would because you know out here in Southern California, it's like you can find their Tennessee sour mash, which is the one I always love to introduce to people that to like friends or friends of friends. Like when we hang out, that's the one I always yeah, yep. bring. It's a good one. And, and everybody always digs. Yeah, I'm like, try this good. like 30, $35 bottle. Yeah. Good. Like it's very reasonable. weeded mash bill soft. Yep. If you're just getting into bourbon, like it's, it's good. Uh, if you already like bourbon, try it. This is it. But in their classic reserve, you can always find, but yeah, it, it'd be nice to have all these finished ones. Dude, like, right? out oh, man. Too. the the one that so I fun. absolutely need. And if you're listening, Nelson brothers. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, sorry. I did, you know, w- when they had asked me like, what would you be into trying? And I told them, well, like these are the <laughs> yeah, ones. Yeah, totally. There's one, their 15 year rye. Ooh. I was like, I know this one's a stretch, but <laughs> if there's a, you know, a possibility of that and that one wasn't in the mix, but I understand that's well, like a really I think big that's such a cool <laughs> thing too, is that like, okay, they've sent you some stuff, but you were already enjoying the brand long, you know, before they yeah. had sent you something, which I, I think that says a lot to what they're putting out there. Like this is yeah. super tasty stuff. Yeah. Totally worth it. And reasonable. Like you're saying like $35 bottle of, to have something that's that tasty at that price point is like, man. Yeah. Can't go and wrong. the different tiers, like even within the three, like Tennessee sour mash, like their weed and mash bill, their classic, and then their reserve. It's like, you've got three mm. levels for- so that they can appeal to like different stages yeah, totally. of, you know, bourbon or whiskey drinkers. And yeah, I mean, I got to, you know, do the shout out again, as always to Becky Smith, who, you know, did the podcast with me where she brought their like lineup as yeah, well cool. as that 15 year rye and the honey cask. And we did that episode where we tried them and she talked through the whole, like the whole history of Nelson bros and all that is like super interesting. And, you know, we, she does a deep dive with me on it. So it's cool. if you want to hear like really more detailed information on the distillery and where they came from and where they're going and some of their other products and stuff, then, you know, go to the YouTube channel and, and check out that episode. It's a good one. And 
it's been yeah. it's, it's been a minute since I've had any Nelson Brothers, so I'm just curious when you actually put these right next to each other and taste them. I'm curious what your how the differences are gonna come yeah. through as you know. Yeah, I think because I'll do a video where I I do this one again and yeah. then once it has some like airtime and all that. But I think I might put it side by side with their sherry finish as oh, well okay. and see cool. like yeah where, where does how, how do these two sit and then yeah with their regular yeah, yeah. the classic expression. Cause that's one thing that's really cool too, is being able to take like, all right, well, here's the bourbon that they pretty much started with. Yeah. And then let's drink this one after totally. and see what the effects of that finish. Yeah. I should have brought it my bad, but nah, dude, this is great. Man. Yeah. All right, man. John Carpenter's the thing. 1982 absolute masterpiece. You know, uh, Siskel and Ebert did not respect this movie. Most people did not respect it when it came out. John Carpenter's career almost got mangled because of it. They called him what the pornographer of violence or some bullshit like that. Everyone said this movie was sick. It was awful. You know, he had to like do a whole detour where he made like a funny movie or whatever with Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Starman, I think, was a result of this. He's it's like, a great right, movie, well, by the way, too. Yeah, I, I finally saw like a year ago where he's like, all right, I got to make something to show people that I can do other yeah. stuff as well. But this has obviously fallen into the pantheon of like great horror movies. And as the years go on, it's it's always like you know, horror fans of that era always love this movie. This was always like big there, but for the wider audiences, they just couldn't handle it. And it didn't help that it also came out, I think, the same weekend as E.T. Dude. So that was not good for it. <laughs> like did not work out for it. People would rather see the friendly alien than the uh yeah. the shape shifting monstrosity <laughs> we get here. And like it's just a pure, honest to God masterpiece. Every time I watch this movie, and I've seen it in theaters too more than once. And actually, the um, New Beverly is going to play it the first week of December. Double featured with the Blob, the '80s remake of the Blob. I, I might want to go see it. Just Dude, like, all right, yeah, I'll I'll man. try. I don't know, but I yeah. and it holds up so well. You see it in a theater; it holds up every time I watch it. You catch new little things. It just like has so much longevity. All the actors are great. I, I always feel like Keith David is a national treasure. Oh man! And I always He's feel so like I keep thinking he did like a bunch of movies with John Carpenter, but really he only did this and They Live. Oh wow! But yeah, he feels like so much part of the like <laughs> yeah. John Carpenter crew. You know, obviously Kurt Russell did a lot of films with him. And yeah, I'll say it again. I think this is a masterpiece within the horror genre easily. And I think it's John Carpenter's greatest film. Bold statement, but I don't. I, I, it'd be hard pressed to to disagree with you. I am not as well versed in Carpenter's filmography as perhaps I should be. Uh, embarrassed almost that I haven't seen this film until now. And as I was mentioning before that we recorded that like I I was familiar with the setup for this film. And interestingly enough, you mentioned horror, but many of people I'm friends with in the sci-fi world yeah. consider this a sci-fi film as well because there is that so there's I mean the opening shot starts off in space. So, you know, there is that aspect to it as well and it totally lives up to the hype. That's the one thing. It holds up incredibly well. Incredibly well. There is not a shot that feels like it couldn't have been made yesterday, which is super interesting and just a testament to the filmmaking. And on top of that, it's one of those films that's never boring, um, has even made me laugh a few times where I mm -hmm. think they wanted me to laugh. Yeah. Uh, and so it's got a lot of these things. The performances are probably better than they have any right to be. For all... To serve the story and to serve the purpose of this film, a lot of the the characterizations are a little bit one dimensional. There's not a ton of characters going on a huge journey, you know, because the whole setup is this thing that comes, you know, this alien that arrives on the planet and eats people, you know, is a shape, not a shape, but it takes on the form of whatever it's eating. So I I was so pleasantly surprised and enjoyed this film. And it shouldn't be any surprise after I'm done watching the film. Alien is one of my favorite films of all time. Just flat out mm. one of my favorite films. And I can definitely see the influence of Alien on this film. And at the same time, this is a unique piece of work. And I'm so glad they got to spend the money at the time. Because apparently it was, for Carpenter, this was a lot of money at the time. Yeah, And yeah. it really shows. Everything just feels so real, so authentic. It's it's one of the things that made Star Wars Star Wars, right? That you had these ships that it looked like they had been through something, you know? And this film feels like it's really of this place and of this time and everything. And I had a great time with this film. I can't wait to watch it again. That's, to your point, you get something out of different out of time. I, I can't wait to deal dive into it again. It's so well done and so entertaining yeah, for great. however long it is. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Dude, really did. Man, right. Right off the bat, too, I, I <clears throat> you know, you get the spaceship whole yeah. thing going, but the, and they even do the same because this is a, a remake of the 
in a completely different Point remake one. of a movie from the 50s, mm-hmm. right? A thing from another world, which in turn is an adaptation of a story called uh, Who Goes There, I think, like mm-hmm. a short short horror yeah, story true. or something. And, you know, obviously they take it in like a way cooler, crazier yes. direction <laughs> here with the fact that it is, it absorbs and assimilates people or whatever and takes on their shape. Sure. And has done this as far as we know, through different planets and taking it. So not only can it shape shift or, or become whatever the person it's assimilating, it has all these other creatures within it too. Mm -hmm. So it leaves a lot of opportunity for the special effects people to get like incredibly creative, which they do. And one crazy thing about this movie is the score, right? Inyo Morricone. When I realized that it was him, because I think, Growing up and watching this movie, I never paid attention to that when I was younger, right? It just, oh, yeah, it's John Carpenter. It sounds like his music. <laughs> it's his movie. Of course, it's him. And I remember getting to a point where I was like, wait, Ennio Morricone did the music for this? Like, Shocked how random When, I, when is I saw that? that on the credits, I had no idea. Yeah, it's like, that. how fucking random yeah. is that? Like, And I think this might be the only movie where someone else did the music. And what's funny, there's an interview with John Carpenter where he talks about getting the first like uh, pieces of music for the movie and how it was a lot more like grand, yeah, and, like yeah. epic. And he had the t- he had the tell Morticone like, "Yo, man, you gotta keep it simple. <laughs> like, just take all this yeah, shit yeah. away. I just want like." Dun- dun. So it makes me wonder, yeah. like, because if if the credit said John Carpenter instead of Ennio Morricone, I would completely be like, "Oh yeah, for sure. It sounds exactly like him yeah. and his style." So I wonder how much he just like told. You know, Marty Coney, like, just do this. This is exactly what I want you to do. But your name's on it. I get yeah, right. Know. And, you know, when you talk about, like, the look and the feel of the film, like, I, one of the things I find interesting about this film is it, it doesn't quite do the Jaws thing where you don't see the shark until forever. But it does such a good job of, like, establishing little things that you mentioned the special effects. They are, they're, they're maybe some of the best I've ever seen in my entire yeah. life. Still, like still, still. They, the, every <laughs> time you see the alien, it feels like it's alive and it is a real thing in the same space as all the things. But one thing I love about it is it doesn't give it away to you right away. We, there's all these little, there's a, I shouldn't say it, there's a bunch of little things that happen leading up into that and how, you know, the dog is running through and doesn't get shot and how, oh gosh, I forgot the character's name who shoots the guy in the face, the, uh, the, speed in the face. Cooper, Cooper, or Gary. Yeah, Gary, Gary. Okay. And, and so there's all these little things that build up to this scene where we finally have the dogs in the in the pen that I think wouldn't it wouldn't the effects wouldn't have the same effect if you hadn't done the work to build up this thing to make it larger than life. I, I just really feel like they did it. It's the the build up to it was perfectly yeah. timed in place. Well just the opening scene is opening so scene. good. Just like dung dung. Yeah. Dung dung. And like the mount like a mountain and snow and just like landscape yeah. and the dog running. And again, like throws you right into the action, right? Like, you know, there's all this mm-hmm. story before this, like there are ways just this, the, yeah, this husky running through the snow in a helicopter with the guy just shooting at it, shooting at a dog. And then it comes into, yeah. and you're just like, what the hell is going to throw in like grenades at it? Yeah. And it, it, you know, them getting to the base eventually, and they got to like shoot this guy. They don't know what the hell is going yeah. on. And it, it just starts off in yeah. such an interesting way. And, and the, this whole mystery and like meeting these characters just through this circuit, one of them even gets grazed with the bullet and, and all that. And, and that's where I think it's so interesting. It was tough to watch this film and not think about alien because of how much I love alien. Yeah. But alien takes this time to kind of reveal a story and what's, why is the ship stopping and yeah. why, why are they waking up from this one? Nope, we're jumping right in. We're yeah. shooting at things right away. You know, don't yeah. hesitate. And I agree. That's, that's that's the way to start a film. Just get you in. Yeah. And now, now that you mentioned Alien, I think about, you know, them exploring that ship and the mm-hmm. space jockey and yeah. the eggs. And this reminds me of that. Like, oh, you know, the doctor wants to go to the yes. Norwegian base. <laughs> yeah, and let's, see, let's, see, oh, what, man, let's see what happens. It seems so brutal. And we're going to go yeah. up in the helicopter and get over there and just... And I love that, like, it's all destroyed. They're walking. Oh. You see the frozen body that, like, you know, the dude committed suicide. And- dude, the set design in this, I, I every every set looks freaking so yeah. authentic yeah. and so real. It, like, it hits you in the face, man. That's one of the things I was, I was, everything is really well done in this film. The set design is one of those things that stuck out to me right away. Just everything felt real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so cool, man. Yeah. And like you said, building up to that point, like here, we don't know anything no. yet, right? They, they find the body of the creature that, and I, I think how wild it must've been like seeing this opening weekend, the very first time and knowing absolutely nothing. Dude. Like even now you haven't seen the movie, right? But you know, the premise, you and I had no know. idea the dog was going to, you know, had anything okay, to do with yeah. the alien. Literally <laughs> okay. I had no idea that had anything to do with it. So, all right. Was, dude, I'm going to jump to that moment. Yeah. Then. The, the, 
the dog kennel scene. <laughs> so like they're just like one iconic, awesome yeah. set piece after another Literally, in this yes. movie. But that moment, and I love the way they even make the dog like the dog is such a character. Yes. When it gets when it gets in there, and there's one point where they're outside and the dog's like looking out the window at them, and then you see it just kind of like creepily like peeking around yeah. the corner in the hallway and walking in the and when he goes into the room and it, this is clearly probably the first person and infected but we just see the shadow of the person yeah. when the dog goes in there and it's all like the top light so even you think the godfather how they kept the eyes yep. in shadow the dog is the, the same the so the same dog way. always looks like really unsettling mm-hmm. be the way it's lit right like, again dean cundy and some of the best work ever and that kennel when they put the dog Oof. away and it just looks sinister just when, like, it, when it like sits in the middle and is being like perfectly still yeah. and they turn the lights off and there's like a streak of light th- and the other dogs are in the corner just kind of look like these dogs are such great actors. There's a performance <laughs> going that. on, man. Yeah. Like, and I buy all of it. <laughs> you totally. And like the tension when they all start like growling because they know something's wrong yeah. and you just hear that weird sound effect. Uh-huh. And when that head turns at the camera oh, and man. splits open, Ooh, dude, it's so crazy it's so cool though that effect is out of uh, again imagine seeing this in 30 in in the 80s like yeah, opening man. weekend where you don't really know have no idea all you have is this trailer and that dog's head splits open into a skull and tentacles are coming it's out wrecked, dude oh my god it's such a cool effect and moment it, rob botin dude he was like 21 or 22 when they made this movie the special effects dude but there's like no interviews with him besides the making of on the dvd or the blu-ray it's Man. so w- one of the things I was experiencing when I was watching, I was like my I've seen creature movies like, but even in the moment, my brain doesn't even know how to process some of this stuff because I've never seen anything like this before. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I, as now that I'm done watching the movie, I could see how many times this movie has been parodied and been homaged and all those kind of things. My brain still didn't quite know what to do with like that's I've never seen anything like that. And that's one of the things I love about film in general is how it can take us places, you know, we've never been to or seen. And holy shit, have I never experienced a dog, you know, <laughs> opening up this way with tentacles yeah. and shit going everywhere <laughs> yeah. into the ceiling and everything. Oh, man, so wild. Yeah. So cool. And it is scary looking like sure. when they, when Clark goes over there, like what's going on? And he's like seeing it. Yeah. And like, there's other dogs like getting sprayed with goo and they're like wrapped up. <laughs> yeah. they're, like they're all getting absorbed and shit. Yeah. The one that gets wrapped up completely. All, like, oh, so gross, yeah. And there's a one that, that's like, but when they're like biting through the, Dude, fe- the like, fence, you, f- you feel the danger. I like, want to know how the hell they got to- that shot, by the way. Right. That was, <laughs> Cause it's just, you know, instinctively dogs don't bite through coil fences like uh, yeah. that. Right. You know? Yeah. So like, how the hell did they, damn that. Yeah. What do they make that out? <laughs> then I was thinking like, it's a great performance by that. Dog. Yeah. Like, you know, I was thinking the same shit. And you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You completely buy the danger. Yeah. It's like, oh, this thing is going to yeah. break all its teeth to try and escape Gave, from this to get away right from now. this. Yeah. Yes. But when they all like come, come down on it, like Max says, get the flamethrower. What? <laughs> Just get the flamethrower. Flame yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, when they see it, like the big teeth, the eye and like, ah, oh, it's so crazy. And they use the steady cam so well Dude. in this movie with like, I think with the POV, when that tentacle thing like blooms like a flower with all the teeth. Oh. And what's crazy is that this creature can be whatever they want it to be. For all we know, it's assimilated aliens and creatures from like a thousand different right? planets. Like, so it can turn in and morph into like all this crazy shit that they're just like making up because they're so creative. But when the tentacle like shoots out at Child's Keith David and it's just that POV yeah. and he tortures it with the flamethrower. So I got to tell you right off the bat, you've seen the film a few times now, multiple times. As somebody who hadn't seen the film, my take on what I was seeing the alien do, and I'm skipping ahead just a little bit, was that it didn't have all the information it needed to completely change into the thing that it wanted to. So that's why we're getting like uh, just the dog's head at one point, you know? Yeah, it's incomplete. It was incomplete. But now having seen the film, I'm like, oh, dude, I think there was like how many other species or whatever inside of that. Like what a cool extra layer. Just, I love shit like that where now it gives you incentive to go back and see all those little details. The special effects work is so, Mm. so good that way that they had the money and the time to spend on it that way. Just so interesting on that level. And John Carpenter always talks about like talking with, you know, Dean Cundy and Rob Oteen about like, yo, we're going to put this thing in the light. Like we're, we're going to see it. It is fully lit. It is not in the shadows. Yeah. When they're in the, they have it on like the hospital. Oh. And even that, when they're first dissecting it and oh, trying to man. figure it out, I think it's, this is after like Wilford Brimley, like, well, yeah. it has two sets of mm-hmm. heart and lungs. Like all the shit's normal, yeah, but normal it's got words. like double. And then when, and 
even that design, they're dissecting it and you see like parts of like a dog that's mm -hmm. in it. And he's yeah. like, where it's not fully formed and it just looks all weird. And he's like that to see that that's not dog. That's imitation. And, and even when they find the first body and it's like the two faces, like oh, yeah. melded together, like, Morphed you know, it was in like the middle yeah. of doing something and, and it got burned. And oh, man. I love the fact there are multiple times where there's an alien on a table and somebody is go, you know, the thing is on the table and somebody's going through it with their hands. I, my brain is conditioned. Oh, something's going to pop out of there. Yeah. I just think that's like, even once again, Alien, a movie I love. Yeah. And they don't do that in the film. I think it's fucking brilliant. They're like, I'm literally on the edge of my seat waiting for something yeah. to pop out. And it doesn't happen. That's almost more, yeah. more suspenseful than well, uh, they they do it eventually. They do it eventually yeah, yeah. And that is one of the oh, one of the all-time great movie moments. What a like, scene, man. I'm sorry, that's jumping way ahead. Yeah. But, damn. Yeah, dude. I, I I mean, in this film, or sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say you brought up Brimley, and I wanted to bring that up too a little bit because growing up as a kid, Wolfer Brimley was a guy who was on commercials on TV a lot. Mm. So that, you know, a lot of mine is he's got the goatee or the beard or whatever. So, you know, seeing him as a little bit younger actor, he, he, the conviction, and this is, this goes for the entire cast. They all played it straight, which was, I thought was super, I shouldn't say straight. They all played it convincingly and authentic, which I think was a really interesting choice that what could have been considered a monster movie. They actually, it seemed like everyone was taking their roles seriously. Yeah. And I assume this comes from the direction and the writing and all that kind of stuff that, you know, you wanted to, the, 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 I, I, they were all very believable. And I think that's one of the things that make alien and aliens so great and makes this film so good too, is that they're all grounded performances, even though some of them are a little bit more extreme than others, but I yeah. think that helped Brimley's character specifically. Like, you know, he's giving yeah. you info and you believe it. Yeah. Even, even the moves and decisions they make, yes, do feel correct. very, Right, because they're dealing with like at this point limited information, yes. and then eventually they watch the tape, right? And they say, okay, they found it in the yeah. ice, and then they go and they even see the UFO or whatever, and he's like, yo, judging by the ice, this shit's been buried here for like thousands, thousands of, years. of years, yeah. So it just like froze out, and and how they're trying to speculate, but the body was found over here. So what you think it tried to walk away? Did it get thrown from the yeah. crash? I don't know, I don't know. But it froze. These people took it. They have to take a lot of guesses. They this thought, they, yeah, they thought it out. Like I don't know what you want me to right, say. Right, this totally. Thing. And I love even you, you, and you still have someone like Childs who still oh, doubts it, right? When right. he's like, I don't believe any of this voodoo yeah, bullshit. <laughs> you believe in this voodoo bullshit, Blair? <laughs> and then, you know, Palmer is just like, he's like, chariots of the gods, man. They taught the Incas <laughs> practically everything they know. They own South America. <laughs> like, just all the government it. conspiracy yeah. shows. But, yeah, man. And we they've already made it clear, like Windows being the communications guy, like they yep. can't get through to anyone. It's already been they're weeks. on their own. The the uh, the big winter storm is coming, so they're they're already in a place where they can't like leave or do it. Like, and they know, you know that it can change form. That's the one thing we the information we do get pretty close off the bat that mm -hmm. it, it can assimilate the form yeah. whatever it needs to. But outside of that, we don't know a lot. We don't know they know fireworks on something. They're not a mm -hmm. hundred, but they don't know really even what to do with this thing when they yeah. find it. And then you get little bits of information about how, you know, one particle of this thing could be total disaster, you know, all these interesting things that lead to impending doom. To yeah. Say the least. It makes sense that like then Wilford Brimley gets all crazy because he's oh, the one who's he discovering insane, yeah. this, that, which by the way, that's a great choice too, because is he infected or is he just losing his mind? I understand the film does make it somewhat clear and I'm sure it makes it clear on the second viewing, but I thought, okay, maybe, maybe he's been infected. I don't know. He's, he had his hands in there with some latex gloves yeah, right, <laughs> enough right. to, you know, yeah. so I thought that was another, just, just, it kept me guessing, you know, yeah. who's infected. That's one of the things that happens throughout the film. Who's infected, who's not all those kind of, who can we trust? Who can we not trust? Yeah. And uh, just the, the direct, the writing, direction, acting, editing, the, the way everything builds into the next and, you know, they have it in that storage room and Bennings is in there like, all right, yeah, they said they just want to, we're going to lock mm -hmm. it in here. That thing's going to win someone the Nobel Prize yeah, or whatever. Exactly. And, you know, Windows goes to get the keys, which is important later. Mm -hmm. And it's at this mo moment, it's cutting back between the other doc, uh, um, Fugues yep. and, and Kurt understand. Russell. And that's when he says, he's like, yo, like the molecular structure yeah. or like it works on a molecular level. Like these remains are still fucking alive. Yeah. Like we need to get like, and it's at this moment you see it moving under the cover and yeah. windows oh, comes in so and good. Bennings is getting taken over and do when he runs out and they have to torch him and such a scare. I've known Bennings for 10 years. You know? <laughs> 
I assume they're using real fire throughout. I mean, I don't know how else they would have done. Oh this. yeah, for sure. So the fire is just like terrifying because it looks so authentic, and you see the gas and everything. Oh man, yeah. And it, it keeps happening throughout the film. Some because, great fire stunts <laughs> and so many explosions. Like that was one. Of the, I, I, I know I'm skipping ahead, but I loved the explosions of this film. And how many there were? And, yeah. You know, it, it just it felt very real uh, yeah. to say the least. So, I mean, and then of of course, like the big thing about this movie is the the paranoia aspect, oh, dude, right? right? Like everybody the, being stuck together. And we don't know who's who's, who, who? who's what, when they were taken, what's yeah, who's what. Like infected. Somebody put these clothes in the trash can over here. Oh, we found some other clothes with the name tags are ripped off and shit like yeah. that. And yeah, that was the thing. So they, what was the point they make where like they, you know, if they entered through the clothes, that becomes one of their telltales, but that they can't even trust that yeah, at some point. Like it rips through your clothes. It rips through your clothes, <laughs> but then you can't trust that because we find out later that somebody whose clothes got ripped didn't get infected. Like mm-hmm. that's uh, I just once misdirection, making you guess, keeping you guessing as the audience, we feel almost as paranoid as the, yeah. the, 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 the people who are going through it, which I thought was super, that's a really great way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Now like, like Wilford Brimley talking to Clark, like how long were you alone with the dog? Yeah. Like, what'd you do with the mm-hmm. And, and they immediately think he's the first suspect right. because he was the one touching it and, mm-hmm. and all that. We don't know whose room it went into. And, you know, yeah. And I think it's like right after this, when they burn Bennings and they're yeah. talking about like, okay, like that was the thing trying to become him. That's not him. Like now this shit's real serious. <laughs> and I think that's when Wilford Brimley, what's his name in the movie? I forgot. Oh my God. Or he's Blair. Yeah. He's Blair, right? Wilford Brimley is Blair. And that's when he destroys the helicopter and he freaks out and is like ruining the radio. And then they have to take him down. Uh, Blair. Yeah. Blair. Blair. They have to take him down and they get the idea. Like then they lock him up. Right. Yeah. And they get the idea for the blood test. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. right? Yeah. Where they're going to go to the blood bank. And yeah. Where they, they and then com- someone, did, someone that. destroyed it all Dude, already. Like all, all over the floor. Of and th- this is just one of the great, like, paranoid moment. or like before that when they're outside and they're like all right well if it's a perfect image because they're saying like i guess we just got to wait it out yeah and that's when mccready is like no there's no waiting yeah, like it's is- gonna take everybody over mm-hmm. like one or two people might already be it you know we're like we have to we have to put a we stop act, to this yeah. so how all right if i was a perfect imitation how would you know it was me okay blood test <laughs> idea and when they're in there and they see it and they're talking about the keys and everybody like no, once I, I borrow the keys yeah. from him, I give it right back. And he just looks at him. I don't know. It's possible someone lifted it from me. That's bullshit, Gary. No one would have taken that. And I like when you see windows just kind of like backing up. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. And again, another great steady cam shot where it follows him running down the halls to get the gun. And oh, yeah, he kicks in the glass to get the shotgun and stuff. He could be one of those yeah. things. You know? Is this the point? Okay, I don't want to get this mixed up. Is this the point where he starts doing the testing of the blood? No, that's, that's later. That's later. Okay. Yeah. Cause, cause here now, then they make it a point to, you know, Gary pulls the gun on all of them. That's right. He pulls the gun. Thank you. That's right. And then luckily he decides he puts it down and he's like, all right, maybe you'd feel better if I wasn't in charge. Yeah, and that's exactly. when McCready takes it. And you learn a little bit about childs here too, even though just like his remarks and stuff, we don't know too much with him, but he goes for the gun. And then that's when McCready is like, Nope. Nope. Like, yeah. Can't trust. And, and uh, a few of them, a few of them are like, like hell you will. Like, yeah, yeah. So we learn quite a bit about childs just in that moment, how they were all like, nope, anybody yeah. but you yeah. essentially like without saying it out loud, yeah. just like in their actions of like trying yeah. to block him. And then McCready's like, maybe someone a little more even tempered. So now he is like the official leader. Right, right. For now. And this is when they have to go out and, you know, check yeah. some shit. And they take the, the chopper out, right? They did a helicopter. Over yeah. Blair, that. Blair yeah. already destroyed everything. Yep. So they're stuck. They know they're stuck. They know there's, Oh, that's right. Yeah. He so axed the, uh, all the yeah. communication. Yeah. So we got to, we got to wait till the rescue yeah. team gets here in spring, yeah. but what a scene. This scene's freaking awesome. Uh, I love that they took the time. This is a great point in the film, I think to breathe too, but you see, this is one I'm talking about the sets where it's just like, they look total like the, the this is the Swedish outpost, right? Where the, the Swedes. Oh, are. that was earlier. Yeah. That was earlier. Norwegian. Where, where, where do they go investigate right now then? Sorry. I'm my the, Oh, just- this is, it's around this point. I think Max like talking into his recorder, recording everything, but this okay. is when he talks to Fugues when Fugues is like, Hey, so if this thing yeah, can right. take something over on like a very small, like molecular level, then we need to prepare our own meals. Yeah, we we can't be sharing anything. No food. That's right. Yeah. We got to eat just from cans. Yep. And he's like, okay. The lights go out. He goes outside. Right. And then it's after this when they're all in the rec room and they're like, all right, well, where's Fuchs? He's been gone for an hour. The mm-hmm. lights went out. Yep. Anyone could have gotten him. 
And that's when they go on the search and when they get split up. And so interesting scene though, and I'm going to save some yeah. of these points for the end, but this is when Mac windows and Nulls are together and they see his burned body. And we yeah. don't, we never get an answer to what happened. Just the speculation of like, Oh, did it, it killed him? Like, right. well, it wouldn't kill him if it wants to be him. Maybe he burned himself before it got to him, which I always think he has the saddest death because he's Dude, just like right? burned alive out there alone. But, but it's unanswered. And I think that's kind of an interesting point that, you know, we don't know. What yeah. Nobody yeah. saw it un- unless whatever tried to kill right. him or whatever, yeah, you know? And, so. And even then, you don't find out later. No one says no. anything. But that's when Mac wants to take Knowles to his shack because the lights were the turned lights off on. when yep. I left earlier. And now they're on. And now they get split up. And this is great, dude, when dude. they're all like waiting there by the door and Knowles comes back in and they let him in. And they were almost going to turn on him, too. Oh, yeah. That was awful. When, yeah. When they got the <laughs> flame, like, why are you alone? Yeah. And, and I And I... I, I love just this little moment of their like conflict where, and they're so unsure because Nalls is, yeah. is telling them and he could be fucking making up anything. Oh, totally. We're just like going with the story. Right. Like, and I realized like, you just kind of go with the story where he's like, Oh, I found like his ripped up clothes on the, but he didn't see me. I think it got to him. And so I cut, I had to cut him loose. Cause they're like, they're in the, Snow, right? Where they have like the guidelines and shit. You know, I had to cut them loose. And again, the way this is shot where they're arguing about what, like what's going to happen. And Palmer's like, well, let's just open the door. Like get him in. Like, why are you in the Why are you so anxious to let him in here? It's the (laughs) best chance to blow it away. And they're just pointing the flamethrowers at each other. And man, and windows just like, oh, but what if we're wrong? (laughs) And I love when, and just the way he delivers this, he's like, well, then we're wrong. They were wrong. Yeah. And the way the camera moves in when you, and the the music builds up and you see the doorknob just moving, the camera pushes in and, you know, eventually he breaks in through the storage room and the dynamite. Oh, it's so good. I want to get to the dynamite just because that part I thought was awesome. (laughs) But the thing that happens throughout, like it doesn't even stop here where every character is always questioning all the other characters throughout the film that never stops. Yeah. And so that kind of like confusion really affect, um, affected me as an audience member. I, I never knew who to trust. I never yeah. knew. And in a film, actually, especially when it's Carpenter, I, I even, I didn't discount that, that uh, Kurt Russell's character might've mm-hmm. been infected. It's uh, like though, even when you've got, you know, these, these recognizable actors in the film, I think that's such a interesting way to do it where literally every scene has somebody questioning somebody like yeah. in this film. And I think that's just such a brilliant way to set the whole thing up. But then enhancing that, like you're saying the handle moving by itself, you know, we only see the handle moving, you mm-hmm. know, and the, the way the camera moves, these little things that just really add to the suspense or the, you know, on yeah. the edge of your seat, what the hell's going to happen next. I think totally agree. Totally. Yeah. Well and done. just a lot of suspicion in there, right? Cause yeah, it's like Noel's Noel said that, but yeah, for all we know, it's him. And of course right. he's going to say that. And, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like, like you said, they're constantly questioning each other. and But this brings us into the the blood test part, right? He breaks in, he's freezing, he's talking about, you know, if, if you touch me, we all go. He's got the dynamite now. Oh, I love this. This yeah. is might have been one of my favorite scenes of the whole freaking yeah. movie. The, the, like the another massive iconic Dude, point. Holy you know? shit. This is he's like incredible seeing what happened. Like he gets the idea, like here's how we'll do the blood yep. test. Like, you know, Oh no, this isn't even that I'm skipping ahead to the blood test. Cause this is when Norris has his heart attack. So we're in this iconic scene because they're trying to tackle McCready and he's got oh, a dynamite yeah, 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 and then he, he faints. He has yeah, a he heart faints. attack, which they kind of foreshadowed a little bit yeah. earlier, man, dude. And this is always like, no matter how many times I watch this, the build up to this and the way it's executed is always perfect. When they're hitting them with the defibrillator, yeah. whatever the hell you call yeah, defibrillator, it, defibrillator, yes. And that stomach opens oh, up and dude. bites his arm. Oh his my arms. god! <laughs> Literally chops half of his arms yeah. off just the stubs. <laughs> and then the tentacles are coming out. Oh. And the head just like stretches off onto the table. How do we skip over that scene? Holy yeah. crap! That's yeah, dude. It it and again everything in the light but holds up so well. Looks so real. Looks so believable. The textures, the lighting, and then when it's in silhouette and it grows the fucking spider oh, legs, man, dude, and it's dude. like and the eyes come out straight up, and oh. it's just like crawling around. You Which gotta is, be kidding me! It's the next scene, right, where the, we see the face on the end of the, uh, or is it this one, where the face you can see like his head on the on the edge, yeah, of the like thing. his whole dude. Out. Yeah, how do they the do? It, it looks so yeah. freaking good, man. I couldn't believe what I was looking at because you see that nowadays, you just assume 
to VFX, you know, it's something yeah. we did in the computer or whatever. This, oh, they, they must have had to made that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and it, my brain almost doesn't know how to deal with it looking that good. Like, literally, it, it's just so freaking convincing and con it's insane, man. Oh, dude, what a what a master stroke of work with that one. The, this cognac cask bourbon is very, is it opening very up? good. Okay, yeah, I've it's been, very good. I've been waiting to, to give it a sip. Let's see. Is it? I, I still I don't know what it is about it where I can't like pick out specific notes. I just know it's really Ooh. good. I can definitely get that raspberry and like berry and dude, grape. Now I can get kind of vibe on yeah, the nose. Man, all is up there. It. It almost seems like more of the spice factor. Yeah. His actually like, it's not as mellow as it was before. Like it's no. more prevalent, but it's, it's yeah, good. It's such a good balance of like that, that uh, kind of spice with the sweeter characteristics. You I can know? do this more often. I got to wait for these things to open up. The, the taste is just so much good. full. It has a much yeah. more full taste when you've allowed it to oxygenate and open up. A bit. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, dude, this it's just such a good scene and oh, torch man. it and I got some wind. Uh, and I, I think this is where, yeah, so this is when we get into the blood test because he gets the idea yeah. that every single part of him was like an individual yeah. and so they're and like, it's gonna try to yeah. survive when I'm he gonna, saw it like crawl away. So, you know, your blood's gonna act the same way. And I think he kills Clark in this moment because Clark mm -hmm. and I I love that shot when he has a scalpel. And you keep seeing it. It's almost like a split diopter shot Dude. where it's in the foreground. Oh, man. And they're in the background talking. And then when he goes from, because he was almost going to shoot Childs. Yeah, he really then, was. Then kill me. He roped him up. He tied him up. I mean, yeah. he was ready to, to make a move. You're not going to do this. And then I'm going to have to kill you. Then kill me. <laughs> I mean it. I guess you do. And that's when Clark makes the move and gets whacked. Man, another just master class in suspense, this whole blood test scene, dude. Oh. Just, and the sound. And no, you just hear the wind outside. And they're like talking and still to your point, like arguing that not like arguing, but like being very combat, like yeah. this is bullshit. Yeah. This test isn't going to work. You know, they test Clark first. I guess that makes you a murderer because it wasn't him, huh? And just talking all that shit, just the, the sound of it, like oh, the, man. the squeak, the little bit of smoke. the squeak and the yeah. smoke, <clears throat> you know, yeah, totally. and the way you will like drag it on the blood and even the shots of them cutting their thumbs open. Like why did windows cut so oh, deep? Right? It like, it like still gushes out. <laughs> it me. And okay. I think he's the first one he does. And I like when he backs up and you almost think it's going to be him because he like puts his head down and looks all mad. Like I like how they try to frame everybody. Like it might very well Dude. be that person. And I love the way that this whole thing is bookend as well. So I believe this is the one where he gets torched. He kicks him out in the, the ice and then he throws the. the yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. Dude, first of all, I did chuckle a little bit I, just because of how wild the situation mm -hmm. is. But then secondly, they're setting up what, how do you kill something like that? Or how do you solve a problem like this? There's just no rational way. So they've, you've done all this build up in this build up. So how do you pay off on something that's been this on the edge of your seat yeah. and you torch him. That doesn't work. Then you kick him outside and you, you blow him up with dynamite. Like you, yeah. you have to go the extra step and the, it, just to see the whole thing blow up. I just made me <laughs> chuckle a little bit, but I just thought, man, this is, oh, this is like, this is, this is so good right now. Yeah. It's, it's incredible, man. And just all the, the talking, you know, <sighs> back and forth and not, not being a believer. Who can you trust? Who do you know? Everyone's tied up, but you know, I yeah. mean, there's one guy who's, who's doing all this. So we have to, we don't even know if, if what his, if, you know, if he's, if he's not the uh, infected right now. So it's, that's what's, it's masterful. It's yeah. masterful keeping you that, that, that guessing that much. guessing. Yeah. And it, it just, it lasts just long enough, man. And, yeah. and then even for us too, it's almost like, we don't even know if this Dude, shit's going to work. So we're kind of the same as them. Like, you know, this is, this is nonsense. Yeah. This doesn't prove a thing because they've gotten lucky so far. They've yeah. done like so many people, they gotten yeah. lucky. And I, it's so, it's still just such a good, there's, um, I hate jump scares, but this one is so, <laughs> so good. good. Like, yeah, I thought you'd say that Gary, you were the only one who could have got to that blood. <laughs> we'll do you last. <laughs> and then it just screams like just, <laughs> that awful screaming sound. And I the blood jumping up. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's like, so gross. Goes everywhere. The, and I love even the simple thing, like the shot of the flamethrower hitting the ground and like, oh yeah, all across. Being dry, like, man, why are they picking just good shots? Like, oh God. And they're like stuck to the chair and shit, dude. Oh yeah. yeah. And they can't move. Oh man. Yeah. When he's connected to them. And yeah. he's dude, that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you cut back to them beginning the test again, yeah. and like now everyone's a believer, right? right. <laughs> and I love when he tests, like how it's just him by himself now and he tests Nalls and then it'll do a hard cut yep. to now Nalls has the flamethrower. <laughs> and then Childs is up next. And I love when they test them. 
when he's all right, cut me loose, cut me yeah, loose, get, like, me get me out of here. Don't put me next to that, That's how I would feel. I'd be, I'd be in like, such a hurry. I'm like, tied like, down like, and there's this thing yeah. loose, dude. <laughs> I mean, and then like hard cut and now all three of them just have the gun. On Unfortunately, Knowles is good. That's going to be his demise. The fact that he, he couldn't pull the trigger on the, right. Cause, cause uh, what's his face? Kurt Douglas can't get the flamethrower to go. Oh, off. that was windows. That was windows. Oh, windows. I'm sorry. That's right. Windows, he, he, froze he froze up. He froze up. He froze up and he got Cost like his life. head in there. Yeah. They had to torch him too. And yeah, I mean, it, it just such a good, I know you gentlemen have been through a lot, but I don't want to spend the rest of this winter tied to this chair. Yeah. That just brilliant, brilliant scene. And then, yeah, they go to Blair and he's just gone. Yeah. I, this is totally the one him. bit that I don't quite, I don't like that. He was like building a UFO, a spaceship out of like tractor parts and helicopter parts. That's a little weird. Don't really like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like when they're rigging the like, it doesn't lessen the movie for me. But like somehow it just becomes a little less interesting when they're rigging the explosion explosives and all I, that. I didn't. I, I followed that. You know, they they didn't want to let it freeze again because they know it could last forever, yeah. and they figured the only way they can do it is to burn them and blow them up. You yeah, know, I totally get that part. I still wasn't a hundred percent sure why Blair had to be kept in confinement until they finally let him out. I didn't quite. F- Follow that, but it didn't matter to me. Yeah. Well, he point. was a danger. He did try to kill them with I, an axe. That's and a right, gun. true. And, and so they had to put him away for their own protection. Yes, but at some point, like you know, he's not an alien. You know, he's not the thing. So wouldn't you need all of your resources? You can, I guess if your thing's trying to kill you, I, I maybe I can understand it. I yeah. Guess. Well, and I, I think they were just they needed him there so he could like cool off a little bit. Right. You know, I mean, because the poor guy did have complete breakdown. Yeah, so. like he. Went at McCready with an axe. Dude, he yeah, was shooting fair. the gun at them. Yeah, the gun, like, probably, you know, he got some shots off. That makes yeah, sense. Like totally he, yeah. Like, yeah, he was definitely <sighs> cracking up. I liked the way that they, I know it's just, it becomes a little bit more of an action film the last 10 minutes or so where they're literally blowing up everything, but I thought it was still well executed. It's tough. It's, I would imagine that it's challenging at this point of the film with all of the buildup you've had to build another moment where you're building up and building yeah. up. And I thought they did a good job when Kurt uh, Mc, McCready and oh, I guess, who's the person it's he's paired with? Nalls and, uh, Gary, but who's paired in McCready where the, he leaves and then uh, McCready has to light the dynamite to throw it. Cause the thing comes chasing after it. Uh, oh God. Who's, I don't remember who was paired with him because they split up. They have to split up because they have to place dynamite at different places. Oh, Knowles was the last one with them. Knowles, Cause Knowles right. is the one that just kind of walks off. Yeah. He just walks like, off. Yeah. Like we don't see what happens yes. to him. So you're still trying to build a little moment yeah. of suspense built to there. And then you see what looks like tremors with the thing just, yeah. you know, coming through the I, ground. There is a great shot when I like when, you know, McCready has the, the bomb detonator yeah. thing, like the little handle. Yeah, you push just, down like a cartoon, <laughs> whatever that is. But when, he, totally is when he's like tired. wiring it up and he's yeah. just like, how's everything going in there? I said, how's it going? He real, just realizes yeah, he's alone. T- and there was a great shot where he's like looking down the tunnel and he just click, 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 puts the thing like and he's by him. So I do, I do love and that. He shot. lights the flare and yeah, the whole thing. And, right. and I like when we see the monster again and it has like the dog heads Dude, and totally, the spider yeah. arm and like all this crazy Ugh, shit. Like, com- you know, they leave Childs behind to like, you know, you just got to watch the place in case, in case Blair comes yeah. back. And they're just that great random shot where, you know, they're rigging the explosives, the explosives, and it cuts to the steady cam through the empty hallways, and then it leads to like the open door where Childs was. Yeah, and they even see him run off, and you yep. like don't know why. They're- and it's uh, again unanswered, right? You yeah. never know. Like he says something, but it doesn't really make that much sense. Given he said earlier, like no human could have made it through this without a guideline. Yet he like ran off into the darkness alone because he thought he saw Blair. <laughs> But then again, why wouldn't he just run after them if he wanted to assimilate them? So it's yeah, at it's the same time, I love that it doesn't. It's not clear exactly. Like yeah. you know, that's a that's what makes the movie last, right? Among, well, literally everything makes the movie last, but that adds a whole other layer to its rewatchability and longevity for sure. And I, I know I'm skipping ahead to the end, but even the end doesn't really necessarily answer a whole lot of things. I mean, we 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 assume that something got blown up, but we don't see. That uh, we don't see um, McCready and oh god, what am I? Uh, Childs. Childs is ending. You know, they just fade to black. I I love the ambiguous ending. Oh, now so where great! He comes man. out. Childs comes comes over and just that. And he, that's when he tells him, oh, "I thought I saw Blair, so I went after him." And you know, where and and the first thing Kurt Russell says because he's like, you know, did you kill it? 
And Kurt Russell is just like, where were you, childs? And so don't get good. me wrong. Some of my favorite films are the ones where there's a definitive end or yeah. there's some sort of closure. Shawshank Redemption is one of the ones I, br- I bring up all the time mm-hmm. where, you know, there's this closure of the two friends finding one another. This film does not give you anything give you like at all. And it's so uneasy. And I was so like, WTF, like what the fuck? But at the same time, I'm like, oh, that's fucking brilliant. That it, is it so makes brilliant. you continue to sit in the paranoia. Yeah. Which it's all about. Dude, you're right? Still have it, you have it's to live with un- it. Dude, it's yeah. not satisfying. It's like, oh, dude, so brilliant. Yeah. So brilliant. You know, like because you did you, you know, you saw the whole, you know, the whole base gets blown up at I mean, everything blows up at the end. So you see so many explosions, and then these two guys just yeah. And they all know they're going to die even before they they've rigged the explosives. That's the only thing I can assume is that these two like, guys are going to die. Yeah. And Kurt Russell tells him, he's like, no, like we're not we're making not it out of we're here. We're not making like, it. We're not making it. And that thing wants to freeze. We got to destroy it. And, you know, it just wants to go to sleep until the rescue team comes. And yeah, man. And just the, the last line, like, you know, I don't think we can do it. We're in much shape to do anything about it. And let's just wait here a while and see what happens. Yes. And And that's it. I was not expecting a fade to black there, by the way. Yeah. I was expecting some, some some final scare, one other, you know, (laughs) scare, or even, you know, I wouldn't even have been surprised if I saw the thing, you know, something that suggested the thing might still be alive. Yeah. None of that. And brilliant. Just wide shot of the camp on fire. Fade to black. (laughs) Fade to black, man. I just, what a brilliant way to end the film and what an enjoyable I know it's weird to say enjoyable in this, but it's there's just so much stuff to keep you interested the whole time. Yeah, you know? it is a, ve- it's a, a very ride. enjoyable movie. Yeah, I mean, I know I, I feel kind of bad because I think this podcast is mostly me just geeking out about Sorry, it. Sorry, yeah, I wish I had more to say, but it's my yeah. first time. There was so yeah. much to take in, man. Yeah, and it just it's it's hard not to just geek about it. Yeah. It's just so good. Like, and all I can I can just sit here and tell you that in my opinion, the writing and the direction, like every technical aspect of it, is great. Like, it's truly a masterpiece, and you can still watch it and still pick things up. And I mean, here's something that I want to ask you about. Sure. And I know, again, you've only seen it the, the one time is, do you think at the end, McCready or Childs that one of them is the thing? Do you think they're both human or what? No, I think they're both human. My take on it was they're, they're both human and they're both not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because my, my thinking was that if one of them was the thing, one of them would have made the move on the other. That was my thinking at the time. Mm-hmm. But the great part about it doesn't even matter. You know, like at that point, I'm just guessing just like everyone else, like this movie had succeeded on such a level, but that was my thinking. It was like, they're both, they're both humans or else one of, you know, we would have seen the thing again. Yeah. My understanding, you know, that's what my, I don't know. What do you think? I always just like to be like, yeah, they're both human and they made it because I want both characters to make it. And there's like this big theory going around that child's is the thing (laughs) because he doesn't have any like breath at the end, but that doesn't even it's not even consistent because when Bennings was transforming, he had breath. True. And there's people that theorize that when McCready gives him the bottle of J and B, because you know, he get, he passes mm-hmm. it to him and Childs drinks it. Yeah. And then Kurt Russell kind of like chuckles a little bit. The theory is that the bottle was actually the gasoline they were using. Oh, really? <laughs> and so he, and because it's the creature, it doesn't know what it doesn't know what is. It, yeah. So he just drinks it. So Kurt Russell knows that it's the oh, alien. Geez. That's a, I like that one. That's pretty yeah, fun. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. There was someone recently that I saw this video. I forget the channel, but I just randomly watched it a couple of weeks ago where he was giving a, what he calls a definitive theory that McCready is actually the thing all along. And man, he brings up sh- some really good points and he talks about how, like when you know these points, then you got to watch the movie, watch it, assuming that he's the bad guy the whole time. Oh, interesting. And it kind of, there's moments where I'm yeah. like, shit, dude, like, yeah, they do frame him. In a way where like that is very like villainous and stuff. One, the the main point being is that McCready is always drinking the J and B, right? And we got to remember here, the it works on a molecular level. So the saliva would turn the person. It would assimilate yeah. the person. How did Blair get infected? He wasn't the thing when they locked him up. Yeah. He wouldn't have froke out like oh, that. Totally. And they make it a point where Kurt Russell's alone with him you know, talking to him when he's like, yo, I don't have to be in here. And he picks up the vodka and he drinks it. And it's in the shot when it's a shot of Wilfred Brimley and they make it a point to have it in the foreground. He puts it the, down the there. right there. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, that would have been like when he got infected. And then you can also look at it as he's the one who killed Fuchs. Cause he is, it is kind of a horror movie shot when he's at the door and he looks very sinister. And that's when Fuchs is like, Oh, it's just you. Yeah. We shouldn't be, sharing food or whatever we got to prepare our own stuff and he's like okay cool and he leaves and then the lights go out and then fugues is dead 
And then I guess that does make it a little more consistent with after like, hey, Nalls, come with me alone over here. And I always just assume because it's true, right? Like Nalls did find his torn clothes, but because it's Kurt Russell and we're like made to believe from the get go that he's the good guy. Mm -hmm. We always just assume like, yeah, yeah, like, no, he's fine. But he he, because where did the clothes come from? And he even says like, oh, did it ever occur to you that maybe somebody like took him and stuffed him up the furnace? Who would do that? Though? Why to him? You know what I mean? And Childs even says, he's like, we're not buying that shit, but you just kind of let it go. And in the blood test, that's the big thing, right? But he's the one person, I think, that we don't see the moment when he cuts himself. We see it for everybody else except him. Dude, all this, because I haven't seen the film as many times as you have, this all just highlights to me how well the filmmaking is working, dude. Yeah. That it is, it, it, it forces, it, it makes you want to repeat viewings on it. It yeah. makes you want to answer all these questions and, and, and they don't like they, 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 all these things are just up there for just suggestions for you. Maybe, maybe you take the bait and maybe you don't. And I just think that's what you're describing right now is just expert filmmaking in my yeah. opinion. Right. And one thing I didn't even notice till like the latest viewing is there's a whole thing about the keys who got to the blood. Yeah. Right. When Benning, it's not clear, by the way. Yeah, well, when Benning's before he gets taken over, he tells Windows, he's like, "Oh, go get the keys from Gary to the, you know, the lock this thing up." And he goes, and you remember when he walks back when he sees Benning's being absorbed or whatever, he's like twirling the keys and he drops them. So oh, Gary never got like say, he's yeah. the one who had the keys. Oh, interesting, but he dropped them there. And I don't remember. Maybe I have to watch it again, but I don't remember there ever being a point where it's addressed that they got them back. So they were on the floor, like anyone at that point could have gotten them, but they just don't, they're not like thinking about that because they're so like heightened, you know? So, and I was like, wow, yeah, I never caught that. Like, and it's, again, John Carpenter being a great director, like it's all in the sound design and oh, in the yeah. act. Like there's a reason, it's not just by, there's a reason they show windows yes. with the sound. And yeah, he's, every shot in this film is purposeful, so. Yeah, when he's like doing this with <laughs> yeah. the keys and when he drops them, like, it, it's so clear, you know, they want you to catch that. That's where there are many times during the film where I thought it was working for me. But one of the things I always know after I've watched a film that I've really enjoyed, I want to read about it. I want to see some of, especially films that were made previously to our current years. I always like to go look on the research. I was almost surprised to find out that this film wasn't financial. It didn't find an audience when it first came out. Yeah. Because I'm like, it. Ha this is this is the way you engage an audience. You create all these questions. You, mm -hmm. you present all this awesome stuff you've never seen before on the screen. And it seems now that we've looked back on it, it just seems like a victim of the gen of the time yeah. that it came out, you know, with yeah. where the country was at and all these different kind of things. And so uh, how this is, what a testament that the audience has been found for this film. And we're still ans asking questions yeah. 40 years later, 41 years later. I know because I was born that year. 41 years later, we're still asking these questions, which is freaking what a great, what a great, <laughs> how great of a film is that? That is still making you ask all these questions. Yeah. Pretty it's, awesome. it's amazing, man. On all levels. Yeah. <sighs> Much like this Nelson bros. Dude, chaos. This is really opened good. Up really yeah. well. <laughs> opened up really nicely. It's for being under a hundred proof too. It's, um, just got a good level of spice. So too. if you're in the Tennessee area, which I know is a state, but you know, I don't remember what city is. Nashville. Yeah. Nashville. Nashville, yeah. Nashville. 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 You, Nashville gets everything. Yeah. Let me double check. Yeah. Nashville. Nashville. Tennessee. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Go check them out. But yeah. Well, thanks for talking this Dude, movie with me. And, super fun. And yeah, oh, the one. transfer I saw, it's brilliant. There was only one shot so that good. I saw. There was, there, there's a scene where uh, Kurt Russell was drinking some JB. Uh, what's he doing? God, it was slightly, it was soft focus. It was slightly soft. Oh, focus. was it the beginning when he's playing chess with the computer? No. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's the only time, but everything else is just looks, oh, the film looks like it could have been made yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. J just like Alien. They Dude, both just look like, like Alien. They yeah, could. exactly. Just like that. I love, sorry, I'll end on this. I got to find it, but someone made this really funny meme where, you know, people make memes out of that scene and back to the future where he plays guitar at the dance yeah. <laughs> and they ride at the, the top when it's like people watching the thing and, um, 1982 yeah and then it's the bottom is like the shot of michael j fox like when he's <laughs> and it's like john carpenter That's hilarious and, though. and it, it's 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 like the audience reaction and it's <laughs> like michael j fox and it says it's like john the D. the uh, oh what's the line he's like oh i guess you guys weren't ready for that but your kids are gonna your love kids it. Are gonna <laughs> so, yeah. the audience is watching the thing in 1982 <laughs> but your kids are gonna love it yeah masterpiece for sure you said you thought it was a bold statement that i called this as masterpiece what do you think is his Halloween? 
Well, th that's the film I'm familiar with him before this one. This is the only other film I've seen. I'm trying to think what other Carpenter flicks I've seen. I haven't seen a lot of his films. So uh, the reason I said bold statement is just because it's not a film I was familiar with, mm -hmm. you know? And so someone who I, I know is considered of one of our, the greatest filmmakers of maybe their generation. So many films that literally, I mean, Halloween is one of those films I feel like changed cinema a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm totally wrong on that one, but I feel like there were so many influences that went into this film. It just, so it, 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 it and it was, I think it's adequate or apt to say that this is perhaps his opus because it's, mm -hmm. It's it's masterful filmmaking from beginning to end. Never yeah. boring. Yeah. Always something to to enjoy. Well, all right. That's a wrap, everybody. Cheers.